May the most holy, most sacred, most adorable, most incomprehensible and unutterable name of God be always praised, blessed, loved, adored and glorified in heaven, on earth and under the earth by all the creatures of God and by the sacred heart of our Lord Jesus Christ in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Amen. So you know that this week, this month, we're going to talk on the Holy Face, um, on Our Lady um, and her Immaculate, um, immaculate, heart. immaculate Heart. And um, Sister's going to begin. Okay, so uh, today is um, it's a very, very timely day to be talking about this because we're right in the middle between different feasts. Uh, last Tuesday, we had the Feast of the Transfiguration. And this coming Thursday, we have the Feast of the Assumption. And both of these feasts are somehow connected. And there's something they have in common. Uh, they both remind us of our eternal destiny. As children of God, our home is in heaven. And both the Transfiguration and the Assumption uh, remind us of this. And we are also in the month of August, which is dedicated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So it's a very timely to talk about the connection between uh, reparation, especially reparation through the Holy Face devotion, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. They're both connected. The Holy Face is, as many of you know, a visible symbol in the state of grace. Um, we, we all know we have been made in God's image and likeness. It tells us this in the book of Genesis. And this image is never lost, but the likeness, as St. Bernard says, he makes this distinction, the likeness is lost by sin, and especially mortal sin. So when we have sanctifying grace, we are in some way like God. And the more sanctifying grace we have, the more like God we become. So sanctifying grace is, if you like, it is the life of Christ within us. And just as any ordinary life, uh, can stages of growth, it's the same with the spiritual life, the life of sanctifying grace. And Our Lady is the Mother of Divine Grace. That's one of her titles in the litany. And uh, she is the mother of Christ, she is the mother of his physical human nature, and she is also the mother of Christ spiritually, the mother of Christ within us, the mother of our spiritual life. So whenever we grow in grace, Our Lady has a unique role in that. She is the mediatrix of all graces. All graces come to us through her. Uh, a mother naturally wants what is best for her children. And Our Lady knows much better even than we know because we are so easily distracted. She knows what is the most important thing for us. And that is union with God. Union with her son, Jesus Christ. And through him, union with the most holy Trinity. And a mother wants what is best for her children. So the greatest grief of Our Lady is when we do not attain that destiny we have been created for. We have been created for union with God. Uh, so the greatest grief of Our Lady is sin. When we, her children, turn away from the great good which God offers us, when we lose sanctifying grace, which we do every time we commit a mortal sin. Um, this grieves her Immaculate Heart. And at the same time, it disfigures the likeness of Christ within us. So that is one connection between the Holy Face and the Immaculate Heart. When we sin, we offend them both. And 
Contrarywise, when we make reparation, we console them both. Um, one uh, common theme between the two devotions is the need to make reparation, and in particular for sins of blasphemy. If you remember when Our Lady appeared at Fatima, she asked, she said that God wished to establish in the world devotion to her Immaculate Heart in reparation for sins of blasphemy. She especially mentioned blasphemy. And it was the same when she appeared at La Salette. Uh, she said that the sins of men are provoking the wrath of God. And she mentioned specifically the sin of blasphemy. She said the, the cart drivers, they cannot, they cannot speak without bringing in the name of my son. And today blasphemy has become so common that we almost take it for granted. We only have to turn on the radio or the television. We only have to walk out into the public, even into the supermarket, and we hear the holy name profaned in almost every single conversation. And when we hear it so often, we can, as it were, become accustomed to it and not realize the gravity of it. But it is Blasphemy is a very grave sin. It is contrary to the second commandment. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. And why? Why is blasphemy so serious? Well, Holy Scripture tells us that there is no other name given under heaven whereby we may be saved than the name of Jesus. Jesus means Savior. And if we, if we do not invoke him as our Savior, if we instead make mockery of his name by using it in a trivial or insulting way, we are cutting ourselves off from the salvation that he offers. And this is a great grief to Our Lady, who wants for us eternal life. So, the devotion to the Holy Face and the devotion to the Immaculate Heart are both concerned with making reparation. Making reparation for the sins of blasphemy in particular, for all the sins against the first three commandments. And if we, if we do that, if we keep the first three commandments, um, the, then naturally we will keep the others as well. But we have to get the first three right, or we can't, can't do much with the, other, the others. Um, so Our Lady wants what is best for us, and that is eternal life. And if we are in the state of sanctifying grace, we have every reason to hope that we will gain eternal life. But it isn't something that is just a treasure for ourselves. It is a treasure we have been given to trade with. In the Gospel, our Lord tells us the parable of uh, the servant. A, a rich man gave his servants a number of talents. To one, he gave one talent. To another he gave two, and to another he gave five, and he said to them, Trade till I come. And while he was gone, they went and traded. And when he returned, they, re they returned what he had given them with an increase, except for the one who had received only one talent. And the master of those servants, he upbraided the, the wicked servant, the slothful servant, who had just hidden his talent and buried it in the ground. And that is the way our Lord wished to teach us a lesson. Whatever good we have has been given for us to use, to, to bring forth more good. We have been given the gift of faith and we have to use that to bring it to others, to bring others into the faith. Um, that is the greatest 
gift they can have is the gift of faith, because it is only by faith that we are saved. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So, if we are truly devoted to the Holy Face and to Our Lady, we have to try and reach out to others in whatever we, way we can to bring them to the faith, to bring them to the truth. And that might be in a hidden, silent way by our prayers, by our example, or it might take a more external, visible form by our conversations. And that depends for each of us on our circumstances. Our Lady at Fatima, she gave us some suggestions or recommendations on how to make reparation. She said to the children of Fatima, make everything you do a sacrifice. Now sacrifice comes from two words, Latin words. Sacra means sacred or holy, and facere, which is where vice is derived from, means to do or to make. So to make holy or to make sacred, that's what sacrifice literally means. And when Our Lady said, make everything you do a sacrifice, she means make everything you do holy. And we do that by having a pure intention in what we do, doing it for the intention of pleasing God. All our ordinary actions, even pleasant ones, can be made into a sacrifice if we have that intention of pleasing God. But very often our intentions mixed up and we try to please ourselves first and we give God maybe the second place, if at all. So it takes a little bit of effort and struggle to maintain that right balance. And that's where the use of mortification, mortification means literally to put to death, morte is death. Um, and St. Paul talks about this, the old man within us. So we have within us, we have nature and we have grace, and they are in combat with one another. There is the old man, the fallen man, fallen human nature, um, which is pulling us towards what is most pleasant, here and now, and then there is the new man, uh, the life of grace, the conscience, which is pulling us towards the supernatural good, and they are in conflict with one another. And to maintain the right balance, the right order, sometimes we have to do what is unpleasant, force ourselves to do things that are unpleasant, just to maintain that balance to maintain the order of uh, to, to do what we know we should do so that in when it is a question of sinful things we will make the right choice. The death to self or self-denial is done for a purpose and that purpose is to restore God's image and likeness within our souls not only in our own souls, but also the souls of others. Because we are united, we are members of the mystical body of Christ. So everything we do has a consequence, um, either good or bad. It affects others as well as ourselves. Another connection uh, between the Holy Face and the Immaculate Heart of Mary is gathered from the revelations made by our Lord to Sister Mary of St. Peter and also to Mother Maria Perina. And he said to Sister Mary of St. Peter, do not separate my heart and my mother's heart. And I don't have the exact words from the quote, but he told her not to separate his heart from the heart of his mother because the two are united. So, and uh, the fathers of the church talk about this too. They say that when our Lord's heart was pierced on the cross, he was dead, he couldn't feel it, but his mother felt it. 
and they say that what pierced his body pierced her heart. Uh, so the sacred and immaculate hearts are united. And then our Lord said to Mother Perina, he said that uh, the sorrow of his face is re uh, the sorrow of his heart is reflected upon his face. So he said that the devotion to his holy face completes the devotion to his heart. So you see the connection. Uh, in, in practicing devotion to the holy face, we are at the same time consoling the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and vice versa. So when we observe the first Saturdays, for example, that is consoling our Lord's holy face as well. Uh, finally, I'm, I'm just going to mention that Our Lady at Fatima, she said to us, um, my Immaculate Heart will be your refuge, lead you to God. Now we know that times are coming, perhaps very soon, when there will be a chastisement. And the prophecies speak of this. We know it has to come because the wickedness in the world is getting greater and greater. Uh, we, we've all heard, I'm sure, of the the scandal, the blasphemy that took place at the Olympic Games with this mockery of the Last Supper. And that is just one example of many of the, the height that wickedness has reached. Um, I would nearly say it's gotten worse than it was at the time of Noah's flood or the time when Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed with fire. It has become so open and so, so widespread that God has to intervene. And it's not because he hates us, because he wants to condemn people. It's like a good father. A good father, when he sees his children misbehaving, he won't leave them indefinitely to misbehave. He will come and discipline them. And that is what God is going to do to us, to correct us, in the hope that we will return to him. So Our Lady said her Immaculate Heart will be our refuge. And some of these modern prophecies, which we have to be very careful of because we don't know how genuine they are, they speak about refuges. And they mean like a physical place where say, all the good will be gathered together in this wonderful place and they'll be shielded while the chastisement is going on. Well, it's a nice dream, a nice idea, but I don't think it's going to work that way. When Our Lady said that the good will be martyred and uh, she says that there will be great sufferings for everybody, even the good, um, we, we know we can't get off that easily. But she says her Immaculate Heart will be our refuge. So we have to think in terms of a more spiritual refuge. And how do we enter that refuge? Well, we do that by loving what she loves and doing what she asks of us. Um, she said, oh sorry, uh, Mother's just given me this, this little quote here from our Lord to Marie Julie Jehenny. She was a stigmatist. She lived in Brittany and France uh, from 19, uh, 1850 until 1941. And she received a number of prophecies for our times, as well as prophecies in the past which have been fulfilled to the letter. So she is a genuine, uh, a genuine visionary or um, mystic who we can trust whereas some of these modern ones we have to be very careful of. Um, and our Lord said to her, My loved ones, there are three places of refuge for the time of tribulations, my divine heart, my divine cross, and my beloved Immaculate Mother. So three places of refuge. And he doesn't speak about a physical place of refuge, but a spiritual one. And um, that's what we have to keep in mind, that no matter how well we may be prepared physically, if we aren't spiritually prepared, 
Well, we have reason to be concerned because it's not going to save us. Uh, our preparation has to be a spiritual one primarily, but also we have to use our basic common sense and prepare somewhat spirit, uh, physically as well. And with that, I think I will let Mother continue. Mm -hmm.